only foreigner, clap your hands, other foreigners in the room, clap. Yes, sir, where are you from, my man? You're from Southeast London. <laughs> I said, are there any foreigners? And you're like, yeah, I'm from London. <laughs> Were you just taking the piss or, or are you? <laughs> where, are, where are you from before Southeast London? Well, my parents are from Jamaica, but you're not, so why did you clap? <laughs> you thought I meant, are there any other black people? I can see the other black people. <laughs> I mean, are there any other foreigners? <laughs> they sat him near the front so that I would not feel alone. <laughs> okay, are there real foreigners? Clap! <laughs> yeah, so where are you from? Where are you from? I'm from Ghana. You're from Ghana. What's your name? Tuesday? Wednesday? <laughs> Thursday? Ghanaians have like seven names. What? what? Sunday! You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> At least they never forget. <laughs> and this lady next to you, is that your visa? What's the, what's the sir? <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for one just like it. Don't worry, I understand. I understand. <laughs> in the UK is an interesting place. I mean, it's very interesting for me because I grew up in Africa but I grew up going to British schools, British post-colonial schools. I was fascinated. Like Ghana, did you, did you get educated in Ghana? British schools, right? Oh, who, what kind of schools? Government. Oh, government schools, government schools. Okay, okay, so I don't, I don't know what your curriculum was, but our curriculum was very strange because we were in Africa, but we were learning English, French, and Latin. <laughs> we were not learning any African languages. Latin's a dead language. There's no one walking around talking Latin. My school thought there was more chance I'm gonna run into the ghost of Julius Caesar <laughs> than another African. <laughs> and in history, what did we learn? Oh, we learned about Henry VIII <laughs> and William the Conqueror. We did not learn any African history even though we were in Africa. And then I moved to the UK, and I heard all these people saying, why do all these immigrants come here? And I was like, well, you spent decades teaching me. <laughs> Where did you think I was gonna go? Should have taught me Japanese or something. Is I've been a comedian in little comedy clubs in the UK for years. Little comedy clubs, you know, 50 people, 60 people coming. In the comedy clubs of the UK, anything goes. You can talk about anything. So I went from this to doing primetime TV and discovered apparently I'm really controversial. <laughs> I was like, really? I did that thing you should never do. I went online and I watched the YouTube videos and then I looked down and I read the comments and it's just people like insulting you and stuff like that and arguing. But most often people were saying, oh my God, He's so non-PC. He's so controversial. Can you believe the things the African said? Oh my God, oh, how does he get away with it? He's so non-PC, he's so controversial. And I was like, really? I never thought of myself that way. I'm not like, you know, Roy Chubby Black or something. I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I, I never saw myself as controversial. So I was like, these people, they don't know what controversial is. I ignored them. And then I did the semi-finals of Brilliant's Got Talent, and then I started getting hate mail. <laughs> and it was over one joke. Now, for those of you who didn't watch it, essentially, the situation was a lot like this. The crowd was like 90% white. And I was black. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I'm, 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 I'm. <laughs> And your black person on stage, white audience, 200 years ago, this would have been an auction. <laughs> joke, which is not, it's not even a massively original observation. Every black person has considered what their life would have been like back in the days of slavery. I also thought it wasn't gonna shock anyone because I thought we had all agreed in the UK 
okay that slavery was a bad idea. I thought you could find the most right-wing person in the country, some member of the National Front with a Union Jack tattooed to his face. <laughs> and you could ask him, hey, how about we bring back slavery? And even he would go, look, I want them out of my country. I don't need to own one. <laughs> I thought we had consensus. But out of nowhere, the pro-slavery people started sending me angry messages. I got messages like, well, if you don't like the slavery history, go back to Africa, monkey man. <laughs> and I was like, this man does not grasp how slavery worked. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, is some people were upset because I'm African, because I'm Malawian. Now, do we know much about Malawi? Yeah. yeah, some of you do. You don't know much about Malawi? OK, who doesn't know anything about Malawi? Yeah. A few of you. Little country, tiny country, middle of Africa, very poor, number one export babies for Madonna. <laughs> it is very difficult to base an economy <laughs> on just Madonna. At least if we had Lady Gaga, Elton John, but it's just Madonna. <laughs> now, I've done a lot of jokes about the babies which she's adopted. She's adopted four. And it leads some people to think I'm criticizing it. They'll say, oh, you don't think she should have adopted those babies? No! I think it's awesome, actually. Because not only did she adopt babies, she gave millions of pounds to Malawian orphanages. And yet, despite that, a lot of Malawians are a little bit ambivalent. Every time she tries to get a baby, she's had to do lots of paperwork, go through the court. And I'm like, what are you doing, Malawi? She could switch to Zimbabwe or Kenya. <laughs> we need to make it as easy as possible for Madonna to adopt the babies. <laughs> We need to start sending her catalogs. <laughs> but as much as I talk about all these people who are saying, oh, these immigrants coming here, I actually think it's, it's, not, it's not a lot of people. It's not a lot of people. I mean, they're always in the press, but it's, it's a minority. Like, you know, I, I, I was mentioned Trump. Do you think like a Trump figure could win in the UK? No, 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 I don't think so. Because look, there are some nutters. There are definitely some nutters in the UK. But I've lived in nine different countries, and by and large, the UK is the most accepting place I've ever lived. It is, because most of you could not give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You are not bothered by race at all. You, are not, you, you don't have time. In fact, I would go so far as to say, you hate each other more than foreigners. <laughs> I live in Manchester, and I've been told, oh, you're black, it's fine, at least you're not from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing which is lovely is, I mean, if you ever need proof that the UK has come a long way, look at the fact that the British National Party fell apart. They're no longer a party. And the reason they fell apart is brilliant. They fell apart because they forgot to file the paperwork to renew their status as a party. They were defeated by admin. <laughs> and you know what must drive them crazy? I bet they all know if they had a few immigrants working in the office. <laughs> they would have been fine. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, yes, but people don't just say they disagree with you or they don't even just swear at you. They go over the top. I, one person didn't like my joke and messaged me, I hope you die of cancer. And I was like, dude, you don't know me. At least wish me chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't respect them mainly because they don't put effort into it. It's just, you know, them sitting in their home alone in their underpants. <laughs> and they just type, send. I would respect a troll back in like the 15th century. Because that took effort. They'd see someone they don't like, be like, ooh, I'm gonna get him! <laughs> They'd have to get a quill. <laughs> Page boy! Page boy! <coughs> Deliver this message! <laughs> I have a message for you, my liege. Fuck you and your motherfucking father.